Uh, we are the Rio Tinto anode removal team. Um, we're advised by Dr. Wenda Tan. <clears throat> Cody, you got to go. There you go. Um, this is uh, our poster that we've put together for display in the Rio Tinto Kennecott building at the U. Um, through this PowerPoint, we're going to go through the key points on our poster and give some more detailed information. So specifically, um, we were able to work with Rio Tinto. Um, we were able to work with their operations team in the tank house. What happens in the tank house is they grow copper on stainless steel plates through a process called electroplating. Um, what happens is these plates are placed in an electrolytic tank, and then as the anode deteriorates, that has copper ions in it, the um, copper sticks and grows on those cathodes, and as those anodes deteriorate, they have to be removed from the system. And so the issue that we were taking on was this anode removal process. These anodes um, weigh anywhere, anywhere from 150 to 350 pounds, and it was calculated to take around 180 pounds of force to remove. Um, the issue is that this that there's 46 anodes on one rack, and so this can become quite the task in a day. So the uh, solutions that Rio Tinto was looking for from our uh, senior design team is, is they wanted us to redesign and provide tools that um, give the operators mechanical advantages when we're removing the spent anodes and hopefully re reducing the stress on their bodies. Um, so our deliverables to Rio Tinto is a manufactured short-term solution, which is just a modified version of their current hand tool they are using. Um, and then another deliverable will be uh, CAD models and professional drawings for a long-term solution, which will be a add-on mechanism to their current inspection rack to give more mechanical advantage. Um, here's a list of the project milestones we laid out in the beginning of the semester. Um, so far, we've, we've been on track and completed all of our uh, milestones with some hiccups and things like that, but we are on track to finish our final report on time. To help us uh, understand what was going on with the Rio Tinto, uh, the process that they had currently, and to help us evaluate some of our design solutions, we used some software called 3D SPP to evaluate uh, different, the ergonomics of different positions. And as you can see, we evaluated the, the current hand pull posture, an overhead pull posture, and an underneath pull posture. And the, the software allowed us to determine quantitatively how, how good uh, the postures were in balance and also providing us um, compression for certain joints and muscles in the body. And what we found was that the current hand tool had unacceptable balance condition. As you can see, the red dot is outside of the balance polygon. And so our new add-on mechanism provides a, an appropriate balance posture, as well as decreasing the um, stresses induced in the body. These are our refined CAD models uh, for our finished products. To the left is the modified hand tool uh, with the pivot bracket at the end. And then to the right is our add-on mechanism, which is attached onto the inspection rack. Uh, this includes dampers um, that help mitigate any damage to the inspection rack itself. So here are the professional drawings that we will be providing to Rio Tinto for our um, modified hand tool. Um, front and center is the assembly view. Um, behind in the four quadrants is just um, each of the components and their individual uh, drawings to be manufactured to. Um, this front and center is going to be the uh, assembled drawing for our add-on mechanism with our bill of material um, front and center on that drawing. And then in the four quadrants behind us, um, four of the eight um, components that we have to be manufactured. Um, of, the, uh, of the 25, eight of them have to be manufactured. The remaining are purchased components um, from McMaster. That was one of the stipulations that Rio Tinto asked is that we try to minimize uh, the amount of components that needed to be manufactured and try to incorporate as many off the shelf parts as possible. In preparation for manufacturing, we uh, decided to conduct some FE analyses 
in order to better understand what we should be looking for. Um, in design of the hand tool, there are two um, forces or operation of motions that are applied. There's a pushing motion and a prying motion. For our pushing motion, we found a max stress of 124 megapascals, um, which was located right at the base of the D handle that can be seen in the image. Um, at this stress, we calculated a factor of safety of 2.34. And while this isn't super high, um, we felt that this was an acceptable, an acceptable factor of safety because the forces being applied are pretty much the max forces that a human can apply. When we analyze the prying motion um, done by an operator, we can see that it's a much smaller stress down at the base of the tool being 21.8 megapascals, which results in a factor of safety of 13.3. The FDA analysis of the long-term solution showed that we had a maximum stress of 133 megapascals. And this was uh, done under the assumption that the maximum force applied at the end of the lever would be about 50 pounds. Um, so this gives us a factor of safety of about 2.18 using a yield strength of 290 megapascals. Uh, this is the location of the maximum stress in the assembly. And as you can see, there's a small green localized region where the stresses are higher than in the rest of the part and, and, and the rest of the mechanism. And what we found is as we iteratively uh, increase the refinement of the mesh in solving the simulation, then the stress uh, reduced. And so we believe that this indicates that this is just a localized stress hotspot in the simulation and it's not, an, uh, not a realistic approximation. Unfortunately, we weren't able to continue our refinement of the mesh. Uh, we had some limitations in the computing power and the, the simulation wouldn't solve. Uh, and so what, what we're taking away from this is that the simulation is showing us this is the location of the maximum stress, but it's clear that it's a localized hotspot that is not appropriate in the real life situation. Uh, here you can see an image that shows all of the stresses in the component in the mechanism that have of that produce a factor of safety less than five and so it's just this small sliver of the pin that uh, it prevents the mechanism from having a factor of safety greater than five due to the limits in the fea analysis we wanted to validate it uh, using some uh, hand calculations we modeled the the pin um, that was assumed to be failing um, in double shear uh, the hand calculations um, uh, basically validated the model. Um, it, it did come up with a factor of safety that was slightly higher, around four rather than two. Uh, an analysis was also performed um, to determine the dynamic response of the mechanism. Uh, free body diagrams were drawn for each of the components. Uh, to determine forces and also the motion of the mechanism. Uh, from the results uh, of the, the response, it was determined that with an input force, an operator input force of 50 pounds, the mechanism would remove an anode in approximately a one second, which was really good. When we look at our uh, design iterations over the course of the year, uh, we went through many design iterations due to many different um, design goals. The more time we spent with Rio Tinto, um, the more time we were able to better define the problem. Um, the issue being that spending time with Rio Tinto was very sparse and very difficult to coordinate. Um, but as we can see, looking from the left to right, we had simple just pushing different, applying different handles, trying to apply different pivot points to the model that we now have. When we look at the long-term solution, it was sort of the same uh, thing that we saw. The more time we spent with Rio Tinto, the better our designs got. When we started, we were looking at either a rack and pinion model or a pin-driven design. I'm discussing with Rio Tinto, we went with the pin-driven design, then was further iterated uh, multiple times until we, until we got to our final design shown in the bottom right. Some of the significant modifications that were made were um, dampers and springs used to uh, minimize impacts on the inspection rack. 
So before spring break of this semester, we had manufactured a short-term solution hand tool um, made from 316 stainless steel. Uh, we made a visit to their site to test that tool. Um, we also had uh, redesigned our long-term solution based on some of the analysis of some 3D printed parts we'd previously done. Um, after our visit to Rio Tinto, um, right before spring break, we found out that the inspection uh, crane and rack that we had been designing around was no longer the rack that they had they determined they wanted us to design around. So they asked us to change our scope and move to another bay with different cranes and different setups. Um, this required us to have to redesign the short-term uh, hand tool. Um, so since then, we redesigned the short-term hand tool. We've remanufactured a short-term hand tool. Um, we've manufactured the long-term add-on solution out of 316 stainless as well. Um, we've done the analysis of the long-term solutions, FEA on both tools, and we've produced the professional drawings. Um, unfortunately, on March 24th, we were notified by Rio Tinto due to the impacts of the earthquake that we would no longer be allowed on site to test or demonstrate any of our uh, products. Here's a short video demonstration of how the hand tool mechanism uh, works. So the first motion that an operator would make is they would horizontally push the anode and then they would rotate the hand tool to engage the hook on the end with the hook from the bail crane. From this point you can see that the operator then uses a prying motion to push the anode off of the rack, off of the hook um, in both directions. And Jordan will now give a, a live demonstration of our uh, hand tool and the add-on mechanism as we have it manufactured. So, so the hand tool is designed, the operator would push the anode, rotate this, and then pry, giving them the advantage. Um, that allows them to do it with one tool and with minimal um, minimal changes and things like that. Um, I'm going to try to see if I can get a view of our add-on mechanism. Um, so this is our bolt-on add-on mechanism that we manufactured. Um, it is on a linear guide and it allows to slide back and forth on the rack. And then as you lift and pull the handle, that hammer will come out and will push the anode off the rack. Our short-term design objectives are listed here in this table and a few of the important ones were weight. Uh, so we wanted to design the hand tool to be less than 10 pounds and our actual uh, weight for the hand tool is 4.5 pounds. And we, the important thing here was to remove, to decrease the number of removal steps and our goal was less than four when we achieved three. Um, as was discussed by Jaron, our factor of safety is not as high as we'd like, but we feel that it is appropriate given the uh, magnitude of force that can be applied on the hand tool. For the long-term design specifications, uh, we achieved all of our goals uh, about one. Um, we were able to get the stroke time uh, to be about a second, the angle range of the mechanism to be less than 60. Uh, the rack modifications, uh, we were looking to be less than four and we were able to achieve two. Uh, and also the operator distance from the rack to help them to avoid falling anodes. We needed it to be greater than 12 inches and we were able to accomplish that as well, along with a uh, mechanical advantage ratio of one to 6.6, .6, which is really good. Uh, the only thing that uh, we didn't meet was the, the factor of safety based on our current models. So in conclusion, we have delivered two working models with professional drawings and bill of materials for each solution. Uh, we created a prototype for each solution and we feel that we've met our objectives and that our solutions improve the tank house operations. Still to, to further this project, then fatigue analysis could still be performed to see how these uh, solutions perform over their expected lifetime. 
and simple design changes can be implemented and will be recommended. We will give the recommendations on how to improve these factors of safety uh, and reach our design criteria. Are there any questions? Okay, uh, that's good work. And um, let's take some questions from audience. So the uh, is there any uh, uh, the you know heat transfer issue you have to resolve it? I mean the anode itself is not like the hot at all. I mean the temperature wise. No, there is the biggest issue. There are no heat issues. The biggest issues is that the environment itself is corrosive. Those um, electrolytic tanks have a solution uh, that includes um, hydrochloric acid. And so the biggest issue comes into corrosive, um, but we tried to deal with that using the recommended materials given by Rio Tinto. So then the one that you guys, you know, made is made out of a uh, kind of metal that is very corrosive. And what, what materials they suggest you to use it for? Um, so all of, all of the tools that are used inside of their refinery uh, must be made out of 316 stainless steel for that corrosive. Uh, okay. um, so both the hand tool, and our add-on mechanisms, um, every component is made of stainless, 316 stainless steel. So then do they require the, uh, all the PPE when they switch the, uh, the anode? So like the apron or like uh, gloves and... Yes, cur currently they do wear, wear full protect uh, PPE um, from head to toe, um, boots, uh, uh -huh. they wear... Uh, Oh gosh. Uh, hard hats. Yeah. Hard hats, full body suits that okay. are, uh, prevent from injury. So then, uh, maybe, I mean, this is maybe a small suggestion for the economics point of view. Then since, you know, the, the worker should have all the PPE, then, uh, you guys put some, something that is anti slippery parts on the handle. Mm. So then, uh, you know, more stable when they hold the uh, tools. So like somewhere on the uh, like holding area. Okay. So that may helpful to apply the force properly. Otherwise it's very slippery. I, you know, I, I use PPE when I work in the uh, micro nanofab. And uh, when I hold some like a very smooth metal, like a stainless steel, then I always, I mean, always worried about like the slippery things. So maybe uh, you can put a note when you submit the uh, uh, your final report to the Rio Tento, I guess. Okay, okay. we can do that. Um, we agree with that. And you know, currently right now, their hand tool, it does not, and it may be something that we can work with the operators in the future on to understand their need for that. Mm -hmm. that'd, be, that'd be great. Any other question from audience? Okay, so yeah, I can tell like, you know, you guys achieved like, uh, you know, all the goals seems to me. And then um, hopefully Rio Tanto impress what you've done. And um, hopefully they, they make the uh, like a extra prototype so then they can utilize what you guys, you know, invented, I would say, right? So, you know, I'm, I'm happy about it. That's your achievement. And, um, you know, so be confident, like what you've done, what you can do, what you will do for the future. So, cool. sounds good. All right, I can give uh, all the, you know, thumbs up like this. <laughs> what I can do. Thank you. Okay. Sounds good. So, uh, you know, I'll wait for your like final report then. Okay. Perfect. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Good job.